What's the story of Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Married at First Sight Season 17, Episode 2, Rocky Mountain Romance. Let's get started with Michael. So Michael is our groom that got left at the altar by some unknown hussy. We don't know who, what her name is. We don't know what she looks like. We barely saw the back of her head. We barely heard her voice. So evidently she didn't give any consent or permission for her likeness to be used on this show because we never saw her face i have no idea who she is um she sent him a gift because that's what they do they'll send each other gifts before they meet at the altar and the gift that she had given him was a sword and a crown which was very fitting because i think michael is really into swords so the sword was really really nice and um the crown was supposed to symbolize that uh, he was the king of her heart her cold cold heart so when he comes down the aisle his side of the room everybody stands up they're clapping they're cheering for him and I don't know if I've ever seen that before I'm married at first sight where this uh the the, the the bride or the groom their people stand up and cheer for them as they walk down the aisle so his people are clapping for him and cheering for him and I think that just really showed how loved he is and I'm hoping that her side of the room took note of that that your girl gave up on a probably a really great guy because you can tell like how much that people love him how much you know these people are really there for him she comes down the aisle by herself she walks down the aisle by herself I wonder if that means anything at all and when she gets to the altar and she's standing before Michael we only see the back of her head and we hear her say I'm sorry I don't think I can do this I don't think I can marry a stranger so why are you on a show where the whole premise of the show is to get married to a stranger like, I'm really trying to understand that. I'm thinking that when she when she got to the altar and she saw him, there was something about him that she didn't like. I mean, she wasn't attracted to him. He wasn't her type, whatever. Because if she would have changed her mind about this process, and if it was really about not being comfortable marrying a stranger, I would even sympathize with her if she had changed her mind before she walked down the aisle. Even if, even at the point where she was getting ready, you know, had on her dress, her makeup, her hair was done. Even at that point, if she had decided not to go through with it I would still be understanding I would still understand it because you know you think you really want to do something but then when it's showtime when it's time to perform you all of a sudden get very cold feet and you realize I just can't go through with it that's happened to any one of us that's, that's not um, unusual it's not a big deal and if she decided to go home right then and there fine I get it but for her to come all the way down the aisle stand before this man and then change her mind and say oh I just can't do this yeah you're a real hussy you um you you're making it appear as if there was something wrong with Michael and to me Michael is a really cool dude and I think that she really missed out on a really great opportunity to get to know this guy because I was invested in Michael I was invested in Michael's journey I liked Michael but you know anyways so after she said what she said about how she couldn't go through with this you know he said whatever he said to her which was very respectful it was very very civil very polite and that was the end of that you know that was the end of their love story so Michael says when, when he goes back into the back rooms with his friends and stuff, he says that he feels very humbled and he also feels very embarrassed, you know, and that's, you know, that was, it kind of tugged at my heart a little bit, you know, you're stood up at the altar or you're rejected at the altar by this person who is not giving you a chance who makes it seem like she just really wasn't that attracted to you because the whole premise of this show is to marry a stranger and you talk about how you can't marry a stranger I don't understand why you're here then so stop the crap you you wanted to uh walk away you wanted to run because there was something about this guy that you really weren't vibing with that you weren't attracted to and it's just that simple he talks about how this is a very risky process. You know, you're taking a risk, you're taking a chance. So you can't be upset when it doesn't work out in your favor because you're taking a chance that this is even going to work out, but it's even going to get past the altar. So he's trying to like, you know, comfort himself. His friends are there comforting him. There's moments when he's crying. And I hope that that hussy sees all of this. I hope that she sees all of this. And I don't like calling people names, believe it or not. I don't like calling people names, but I'm... I, I kind of got like, kind of like hooked on this story because you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be matched on, on compatibility. 
it's not about the looks. It's not, it's not about, you know, that initial attraction. It's about getting to know the person. Evidently, the way this show likes to portray itself, the experts found something in the two of you that they believed would make a really good union. And you don't even give it a chance. Now, there's been plenty, plenty of couples on this show who were not attracted to each other, to each other in the least, who knew as soon as they saw their partner that this isn't going to work. I'm I'm not going to like this person. I don't feel anything for them. And at the end of it all, they decided not to go through with it, but they gave it a chance. And even as ugly as some of these relationships can get and as uncomfortable it is for us to watch two people not like each other and tear each other down and make life very uncomfortable for one another, even the people that choose not to live in the same apartment, the two, the people that want to live separately, uh, Chris and Paige, I can't remember anybody else, but there's been plenty of them that don't even want to live together. At least you you can give them some type of credit for kind of like going through the process and in their own way, they're probably thinking, you know, I gave it my all. I did my best girl. You dropped this man at the altar. So she leaves him a letter apologizing. Don't nobody care about that. Um, she returned the gift that he gave her, which I don't know if they showed that on television of what she, no, of what he gave her. Um, and too bad we were robbed of getting to know Michael because like I said, he seemed like a really cool cat, but you know, he got cheated. He got robbed. I wish that they could, I know this is really silly, but I feel like he should still be able to go through the process. I think that maybe they should have, um, like hurried up and, and, and found another bride for him and gave him, you know, whoever was in the running to be a wife for him or to be his partner. I think that they should still allow him to stay in the exper experiment, but with another person, maybe because I know the experts didn't all just zero in on this particular woman. I'm pretty sure there were other options for Michael. You know, there are other considerations and I wish that they could have chosen somebody else. And maybe that person would have been the love of his life and let him experience this. And also it's just not fair to the other people who tried out, who auditioned, whatever you want to call it. And um, they didn't get picked, but really wanted to go through with this process. And they also got robbed of an experience as well. Moving on to Becca and Austin. So Becca, she's the one that has chronic pain. Um, she has endometriosis. She just had surgery to get rid of her endometriosis. So when she's out there looking for her, um, her wedding gown, she, excuse me, she has to choose a gown that's not going to be too confining around her midsection. Cause you know, she doesn't want to be in pain on her wedding day. And she's the one with the pink hair. So, uh, so glad, um, and then we see Austin, he's, you know, picking out his tux and initially he was, he was choosing, or he was going to choose a green tux, like this forest green tux. And I was like, no, sir. Uh, uh, no, you look like you work at, at, I don't know, like at, at Avis or you work at the hotel or something. Please don't go with the green tux. Thank God he didn't. He, he chose a traditional black one and he looked really nice. So it's their wedding day. Becca, I was kind of surprised with Becca, her dress. Cause you know, Becca says that she's really quirky. And we got to see a little bit of that today. Uh, she says she's really quirky. She's really like different. She has her own style. She didn't want a traditional classical type of wedding gown. So she chose a gown that was, it did remind me of the Renaissance. When you go to the Renaissance Festival and how the, uh, the women are dressed in the Renaissance costumes with the puffy sleeves, um, tight bodice on top. And then you have um, the flowing skirt and the sleeves are like all the way down to the wrist, but they're real puffy. Yeah, it was very Renaissance. I guess it was very her. I was kind of surprised though that after she got dressed, she still looked like Becca because normally we expect the bride after they're done with her to be very glammed up. She looked exactly the same. Her hair was the same that we've always seen it. Um, she didn't do anything different with her hair on her wedding day. Uh, her makeup was the same, like it was when she was being um, interviewed and when she was looking for her. I mean, she just she looked exactly the same. I just wish that she was a little bit more glammed up. We could have seen like a much more made up Becca for this special day. But I guess she told them, hey, uh, very light on the makeup and leave my hair alone. So she gifted him a disposable camera because she is a wedding photographer. I guess it's going to make sense to him once he finds out what she does for a profession. But I, I felt like she didn't put too much thought into that gift. I guess you're supposed to 
I don't, I don't know. You can say whatever you want, but I guess she wanted to send something or give him something that represented her and gave him some type of a clue on who she is. But a, a cheap disposable camera, I was like, okay, whatever. He gifted her perfume and the... Uh, uh, the, the interesting thing about the perfume that he gave her, it's a perfume that she normally wears every single day. So that was a little bit, you know, that was interesting. That was cute that he happened to choose a perfume that she likes and that she all, already wears. When it came time for the wedding, um, he's already at the altar. She comes into the building and I'm thinking to myself, why didn't they have someone open the door for her? Because she's carrying her bouquet. She has to hold up the skirt of her dress so it doesn't get dirty from the snow and the sludge. And she has to open up the door, this heavy door by herself. Like, why didn't they have like a production assistant person hold the door open for her? She looks like, you know, she's just walking into Walgreens or something, opening up that door by herself. As soon as she came in, I guess the quirkiness came out because she was just all smiles all giggles uh she was bouncing around everywhere as soon as she saw him she went up to him gave him a really big hug and um I was kind of like I was looking at him to see like how is he taking this all in you know because it for I, I thought maybe Becca was like a little bit too much for a guy like him but I don't know uh she seemed to be like bouncing off the walls she was excited maybe it was a lot of nervous energy maybe this is just who she is and she's always like this but I was looking at him thinking you know, is he you know liking this is this is is this nice for him or is he kind of like who the hell is this and what the hell is going on they exchanged their vows then after that she had requested for um, them to incorporate the the Jewish tradition of breaking the glass so they did that I thought that was really nice and when they had their kiss it was a pretty long kiss so that kind of gave me hope that there was an attraction there that they were liking each other because the kiss did last you know for a very long time when they sit down to have their one-on-one -on -one, uh, Becca says that she thinks he's a keeper. She's attracted to him, which is good. We didn't hear too much of how he felt about her physically. Uh, they sit down. Of course, there's always champagne there, but Becca doesn't drink. So they had a non-alcoholic beverage for her. While he's talking, she um, wipes lipstick off his lips. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, don't do that. Uh, don't don't put your fingers on somebody else's lips i understand that y'all are like husband and wife now but y'all are still strangers okay y'all still don't have that familiarity to do that please don't reach out and put your, your your fingers on my lips your grimy fingers on my lips that has been touching uh doorknobs please don't do that so she's uh super hyper she's super excited she's, she's like a, a ball of energy and he's a little bit more even keel a little bit more calm and i'm just hoping that she's not going to be too much for him but it kind of seems like we're already going in that direction she's a lot to handle i don't know if she's quirky because you know what when people call themselves something like oh i'm really quirky i don't think you should describe yourself as that i think that's something for other people to describe let, let us be the um the 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 ones that decide whether or not you're quirky i just think that when you say that oh i'm just so quirky it's like you really want to be liked because that's something that everybody thinks is oh so cute and she's so quirky you don't describe yourself as that you know that's what other people are supposed to describe you as i don't know why i'm not really feeling becca let me just try a little bit harder to be a little bit more open-minded moving on. oh by the way even though becca was very plain jane on her wedding day she was cute OK, she did look really cute, even though I wish that she would have, you know, glammed it up a little bit more. Move on. Moving on to Claire and Cameron. So Cameron is the one whose family is in New Zealand. Last time I did this, I was like, oh, I don't know if he's from New Zealand or Australia, but it's New Zealand. His family's in New Zealand. They're not going to be able to make it to the wedding. Um, he's lived in Colorado for 10 years and um, he's the one that owns his own bike shop. Right. To me, he seems very um even keel very quiet kind of serious so when we see claire claire is talking about how she really struggled with her self-image and that she's finally now at a place in her life where she is like 100 percent comfortable um with who she is which is great so now it's time for the wedding cameron's family couldn't make it as i mentioned before claire 
Claire tells her family, you know, hey, I want you to be really patient with him. I don't want you to be too critical and too judgmental. Her sisters are like, bump that. <laughs> We're going to be judgmental and critical and whatever the hell else we need to be because one of her sisters really isn't feeling this process at all. And so I don't know how much support she's getting from her siblings, but they're like, yeah, we're going to be our normal, usual selves and we're going to judge and we're going to criticize and we're going to do all of that. And I think that says a lot about the family. So there's a lot of emotions with her and her family because obviously they're remembering their brother who passed away. And, you know, so there was a lot of emotions there. And she gifted him she she gifted him a piece of fabric that represents her scottish clan kilt i think i don't know if i heard that correctly but obviously she's got a scottish background and we know about the scottish um a uh, plaid fabric so every particular pattern i guess can represent a certain family or a certain clan or whatever. So she gifted him the, the pattern that represents her family. And he gifted her a stuffed bird, like the stuffed animal. I, I don't know if a kiwi is a bird. I forgot to look it up. I was going to look it up before I did my review. I don't know if a kiwi is a bird, if it's just a fruit or if he just named the bird kiwi. I don't know. Because in the note, he told her, this is my bird kiwi. He's been with me through thick and thin or whatever. She didn't like the gift. Her sisters didn't like the gift either. Their turn, they turn their nose down on it and they're like what is this you're not walking down the aisle with that thing are you so I felt like they're a little bit you know they're kind of rude about it I thought it was kind of cute it wasn't a big deal um but I felt like their reaction was a little bit too strong for just like you know a stuffed animal so I don't really see them being very compatible her and Cameron um she seems to be uh very like a straight shooter uh, no nonsense, says exactly what's on her mind, very independent, uh, you know, kind of like this tough girl image. Whereas, like I said, he seems very quiet, low key. And so I don't know if their energies are going to match at all. But I did like the fact that he wore her Scottish kilt fabric thing in his breast pocket. I really did appreciate that. Maybe that's the reason why she sent it for him to wear it down the aisle. So, um, you know what, do I ever, do we... Do they exchange vows? Y'all don't remember if they exchanged vows or not. How did I miss that? What was I doing? Do they exchange vows? Did we watch that or is that going to be next week? Honey, I don't know. Moving on to Lauren and Orion. So I thought Lauren looked so pretty. I like it when there's like a when there's a drastic difference between pre-wedding and bride and wedding bride I thought she looked so pretty because it was a big difference not to say that she's not naturally pretty she is but the 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 the, the glow up was real I just loved how she her makeup her hair her dress everything about Lauren was immaculate I loved everything about her look by the way Claire too looked really pretty I liked her makeup I liked her hair and I liked her dress so she looked really she looked like a live Barbie I loved how uh Lauren looked now um Orion he incorporated his culture into his wedding attire with the earrings and how he wrapped his bun there was a lot of meaning to all of this and I enjoyed listening to him explain that and they're both very in tune with their culture their ancestors their backgrounds which is just I love it I love it so much. So now it's time for the wedding. When she enters the building, they happen to glance at each other. Now he's all the way at the front uh, at the altar. She's already all, she's all the way at the back, you know, coming in. And so there's like this big distance between them. But as soon as they locked eyes, they both smiled. And I, I really like that. So they get up there at the altar, they do their thing, exchange their vows. And when they kissed, they also kissed for a very long time. So it seems like there was a lot of like, you know, uh, chemistry there between them. Now, excuse me, Orion, uh, he seemed really happy after <laughs> they pronounced them husband and wife, because when he was coming down the aisle, he seemed really happy, really excited. And I thought this couple was very, very cute. And this is a couple that I was the most worried about because y'all, I'm going to be a hundred percent real with y'all. Whenever they have interracial couples, I can I'm kind of like, you know, uh, I have a little bit of anxiety because, even though I'm pretty sure they tell the experts I'm open to any race, um, I still feel 
anxiety about that like are they really going to be okay with you know a person of another race are they truly truly comfortable with that so I felt like you know with these two people I thought she was into him and I thought he was into her so race might not be a factor or it'll be a factor but in a positive way in a way to enhance their love for each other to enhance their relationship hopefully fingers crossed so when they're doing their one-on-one -on -one conversation they talk about their ages she's 31 he's 27 um they both have the same I don't know what y'all I don't I don't all I know is yes I understand what a Capricorn is Aquarius um Sagittarius that is all I know I don't know about moon rising earth or sign water sign I don't anything about that but whatever all of that is they are similar uh whatever they are Sagittarius moon rising earth whatever that is they are exactly the same. So that was, you know, they thought that that was really interesting that they had that in common. She seems to be very pleased with him physically. Um, she said he was tall and he was handsome. And he said that she is everything that he envisioned. So, so far, so good. Now, the last couple is Emily and Brandon, which we didn't get too much of because we already saw their wedding last week. So they just got married. They go off to talk one on one and they seem to be pleased with each other physically. But there's something about it, Emily to me that's a little bit off. I don't know why she seems kind of distracted. Like she doesn't really hold eye contact with him. Um, she's always looking away. And um, I don't know. I don't know if it's because she's not used to being in a relationship or what her deal is. But I've, I want her to be more focused and be more in the moment and not appear like she's kind of distracted. That's all I have to say about Emily and Brandon. And that's my uh, little review of Married at First Sight. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video if you like this content. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.